today's episode, turn average landscapes into epic portraits. I almost fall down a ravine and transform clouds into monumental skies in Photoshop. Here's how. Play tape. So I'm heading to an area of outstanding natural beauty. It's called Black Down, and it's the highest point in the South Downs National Park. I'm hoping to turn an average landscape into an epic portrait. It's four hours until sunset, it's cloudy, it's blustery, really not the best conditions for landscape photography. But I've got a few tricks up my sleeve to transform this scene into a monumental portrait. Oop. <laughs> So I've got my Pika 200 Pro here. This gives me 200 watts of power, three times more powerful than a regular speed light. So I have a composition all prepared. It's not going to win any awards as it stands. The light is changing constantly because of the broken cloud formation. But for now, I'll just show you what I'm looking at and all my settings. I've set the shutter at 200th of a second. It's a fully manual lens set to f8, focusing five feet into the scene, and ISO 200 gets me correct exposure. I'll just take a shot here on a two second timer. So nothing special, I've just reduced the highlights a touch in post to bring out the detail in the sky, but I think we can do better. Now I've reduced the exposure by just over a full stop to 500th of a second. This results in a moodier sky, which is what we're aiming for. Now we can take this one step further by adding a human element to the composition and switching on the 200 watt light. This has introduced some interest into the scene and balanced the composition. And with a slight crop and a black and white conversion, we now have a very nice image with rule of thirds and some framing. An hour later, and a little bit of patience, I had a window during golden hour sun and even moodier skies behind me. I could really bring this scene to life, using the softbox as a fill light on my right side. Right team, I'm going to show you a really effective and quick way to add drama to any sky. And I've done just a few basic adjustments, reduced the highlights, bumped the shadows and introduced some cyan into the blues. And this is the area of the sky that I want to affect. Firstly, I'm going to create a curves adjustment layer and drag the curve down. Then I'm going to head into the layer style dialog box by double clicking the right side of the layer. Then using the blend if sliders, take the underlying layer highlight slider and drag it into the middle. Then using the alt key, you can break apart the slider and feather the effect. Then I'll invert the layer mask with Ctrl or Command I. Take the brush tool, set it to white because white reveals, opacity at 100% and same with the flow, and I'll just begin revealing the effect where we want it. I'll rename this layer Burn. Now I'm going to do the complete reverse with a new curves adjustment layer. This time drag up the curve. Head into the layer style once again, but this time remove the darks on the underlying layer slider. This looks about right. 
break apart the slider to feather the effects using the Alt key, and commit those changes. Invert the layer mask with Ctrl or Command I, and with the white brush, reveal the highlights. I'll rename this layer Dodge. And finally, I'll reduce the opacity on the burn layer as the effect is a little strong. I think 60% should do it. And I'll just put these layers into a group with Control or Command G. And here's a before and after. So listen team, that's it. Thanks for watching again. Give us a like, hit the subscribe button, leave some comments below. Let me know which image you preferred from my photo shoots.